to be having conversations here at the foyer to find out from some economists, some MPs, what their expectations are and how they think the economy has fared so far. This entire week, we've had conversations with uh, some industry persons and stakeholders, and they have also given us a fair idea of what they expect to be taking out of the uh, budgets moving forward. A number of them have talked about the need to reduce the tax burden on Ghanaians. And so, for example, uh, David Kojoa Mwating of Traders Advocacy Group, um, he says that he's expecting that COVID levy would be scrapped. In fact, Guta describes COVID levy as one of the nuisance taxes that needs to go. It was set up for a purpose. Um, it's not being used for that anymore, especially because COVID across the world has been declared um, as, as out of the way. And so he thinks that that should go. But beyond that, they are also asking for taxes on sanitary pads um, you know, to be taken off. In fact, they are asking as well for the taxes on the raw materials to produce sanitary towels in the country uh, be scrapped so that we can produce and make it available to everyone across the country. So quite a number of things that we'll be expecting this morning. And joining me um, here at the foyer is the MP for K2 South, Honorable Abla Jifagomashi, and she will also be telling us what she makes of the situation. She's in red, interestingly, this morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How are you doing? Beautiful, Bella. Quite well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Also. Should I guess why you're in red this morning? Or this is just, you know... You uh, may guess. I may guess. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to figure it out. Protest. Protest, is that it? Yes. What are you protesting? Um, well, all the things that haven't been done mm. or said, most importantly, that as we speak today, there's still that obnoxious tax on sanitary towels, aching me no end mm. um, because of its effect on the poor rural girls in my constituency and around the country. Mm. So I'm wearing red to remind uh, Honorable Kenoforiata and Honorable Dr. Mahmoud Baumia mm -hmm. that they owe us to redeem the pledge because I have a video, which I, I'm sure you've, you've seen, mm -hmm. of uh, His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia saying that it will be removed. Yeah. And how many years now is still there? But a bill has been introduced to scrap the 15% um, tax. No, but we don't have to wait for the bill. We don't have to wait for the bill. Mm. We can just take a decision. We took a decision without a bill to put the tax on. So we can just take the same decision and remove it. But why has it taken this long? Political will, maybe. And I know that... Um, it, it would land like a slap in some people's faces, but I think insensitivity is also one. On whose part? Oh, on the part of all the people who have the power to change this and haven't. But then again, the conversation because would be that we have... Because it's not that we have not spoken about it. But we have the Women's Caucus in Parliament. Yes. And many have expected that the Women's Caucus would push this heavily and ensure that the taxes are removed. I, I, I agree, absolutely. I mean, 40 women for the first time in Parliament of Ghana. And we, have not, we are not even being seen in front of this fight. Mm. We're not being seen in front of this fight to have the sanitary, uh, the tax on sanitary tariffs, uh, tariffs removed. Mm -hmm. It's a blight on our image. Mm. I agree, mm. I agree. It's a blight on our image. Uh, and I'm, I'm challenging my, my leadership that um, it's, a, look, it's, it's too late in the day, but we can redeem ourselves and champion this cause for the girls in all of us, our constituencies and in this country. They, they can't be here, you see. And it's true that we took a decision to come into parliament to represent the whole of the constituency. Mm. But that, that also includes the girls. And if they can't come here, we are here. We need to speak on their behalf. So I agree. Mm -hmm. I, will, I, will, I won't shield us. I think that we owe it to ourselves to uh, be more forceful on the things that really matter, especially to do with women. Okay. I yeah. agree. Okay. So what exactly do you expect? That the taxes will be taken off what is imported into the country? Or do you expect that for um, you know, some of the stakeholders, they're saying that take off the taxes from the raw materials that are used to produce them locally so we can now produce and expand and share it to the rest of the country? I agree with the stakeholders, but I have my opinion, which mm -hmm. I'm entitled to, which okay. is that it, it doesn't even make sense to me that you should tax anything to do with a, a biological situation of women. Mm. I mean, the thought of it just makes me 
sick. Mm. Every month, when I used to menstruate, I, I, I was terrified of seeing it because I'm squeamish like that. I don't even like going to the butcher shop for the same reason. So you can imagine the trauma that they put me through for all the years that I, I was menstruating. Mm. And I'm sure that it happens to a lot of women. It affects your output. Mm. So I don't see why the taxes should be on any at all. Okay. You see? Mm. I mean, it's, it's not as if um, it's a choice that we bleed. It's not a choice. It's part of our physiology. It's part of our making as women. And it's the reason why we have men and women in the world. Yeah. If we don't menstruate, we don't give birth. Why should that be taxed, though? So what if the finance minister comes to the floor of parliament today and doesn't touch on this matter? What if? I'm going to keep talking. Maybe I'll sound like a broken record, but that's okay. The sun mm. will still set. So I'll keep speaking mm. until something is done. Okay. I'm not giving up on this fight. You see, look, Bella, it's, it's because apart from the, the psychological effect on women, it also um, affects the, the output of what the, whatever they're doing. And for the girl child, mm -hmm. we've, we've all invested so much in send your girl child to school, mama send them to school. You remember the yes. song, don't you? Yes. I worked with 31st at the time. Mm. It made a lot of impact. And I salute all those women who fought for the girl child to be sent to school. But because of the cost of the sanitary towel, every month, the girls in my community who will stay home for five days to seven days, depending on how long their period lasts. Yeah. How is that useful? How is that putting, uh, uh, bringing equity to both the boy and the girl? They are, they are studying, they say, look, they have other issues they should be dealing with, like lack of textbooks, mm. uh, lack of access to furniture in the classroom. Why do they, the girls have to have a third one, a fifth or sixth one, of worrying about how to uh, have dignity in that period. It's not, it's totally unnecessary. Mm. Totally unnecessary. Mm. And so every time we try to catch up with the other gender, the decisions that we take puts the gap further ahead. So we take one step forward, we take two steps backwards. It's totally unacceptable, Ghana. And it's embarrassing on our country that we are such champions of everything. We are happy to say we're the first to ratify this and that. And yet, still on our, on our, in our books, we are taxing sanitary towels, yeah. which is being given free in other in countries. France and other places, yes. Abba. To school children. Abba. Well, we do hope that the finance minister will touch on that and hopefully we'll scrap the, the taxes because we... My fingers are so tightly crossed that he will redeem himself. Okay. And the image of the vice president and all of us who have been speaking about it. All right. And just spare us and make that a, 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 a decision today. But beyond that, what are your expectations? Of course, your constituency also was badly affected uh, by the spillage, mm. um, you know, of the water from the Akusombo Dam. I mean, there's excessive rainfall in your constituency as well. So there are quite a number of challenges. And I've heard some MPs who have said that they expect some good news from the finance minister concerning the, the you know, relief items and support for people within those constituencies. For you exactly, what are you expecting to be done? Look, relief item, uh, let me use your platform to thank all those who have contributed and sent things our way in uh, uh, for relief and to issue a disclaimer that the publication from VR uh, on uh, some donation to me mm. and the three MPs at, at, the, uh, at the coastal communities having received relief items from VRA is false. But going on to answer your question... It is false. It is false. They didn't give you any... We were invited on the day the things arrived. In fact, I had blisters for the first time in my life that day, and I was coming to Accra to see my doctor. And the lady in, at the PR um, urged me to pass through at least. Mm. The things were not even discharged from the truck. The things were still in the truck. So if you see the photograph they used, I'm standing by the truck. Mm -hmm with honorable suffer. So we saw the things, they picked tissue for us to hold, and then we left. The only thing we did on that day was to sign 
for some medication okay. which was given to the three communities for the health directorate. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't wait for, they ha in fact, they did not invite the health directorate, uh, uh, directors. Mm -hmm. So Supper and I signed on behalf of the directorate. I left my copy with the director for Anglo that your counterpart will come for it. Okay. So he sent the vehicle to collect the things. How is it that you have given me things to go and... Uh, um, I mean, it was an agenda to set me up against my people. But, but, but why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because you've just said that, yes, there was someone who was supposed to collect the things, and those things were collected and shared for yes. your constituents. They, right? they, collect, they haven't shared them yet. They haven't shared They're, it yet. It's, they want to do an outreach with it, okay. the medication. Okay. Now, my understanding was that uh, we were going to be called to receive the items, the, the other things. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you ask me today what and what was brought on that day, I wouldn't know. Okay. Because it had not been offloaded. Mm -hmm. Now, if you publish, go ahead before the things come to us, you go ahead and publish that, I relieve, receive relief items, you have an agenda. And that's why I have to say that I, I'm issuing a disclaimer. Mm. Because you have, at the time you were doing the publication, the things had not been sent to Ketu South. So why are you interested in saying that Ketu South has relieved, received relief items and it was received by Abla Jifagomashi, the MP for the area? Mm. And you know it's not true. Okay. You haven't given it to me. So, so what are you expecting the finance minister to say with regards to So I'm expecting, I'm expecting the finance minister to speak about the West Africa Coastline Area Development Agenda mm. uh, project, which has been, um, which is a World Bank facility that Benin and Togo have uh, uh, assessed. Yeah. So they reclaimed their beaches, and I drove there. Mm -hmm. I drove all the way to Benin to see it for myself. It's amazing what that fund has done. I, I'm, I'm hoping that we will stop hedging, okay. we will stop uh, crawling and run ahead and uh, uh, assess this facility so we can save the, sh the coastline. I, I went to um, Qatar uh, to see the gates opened for the, 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 the spillage to recede, okay. the, the flood waters mm -hmm. to recede. And I saw um, hotels, they are if this is the sea, the hotel is right here. At the edge, the next tidal waves, all those hotels will go. Hmm. The, do you remember that in 2021, I mentioned that um, if the tidal waves came again, it was going to cross the street and it did? Yeah. Yeah. I'm cautioning that it's important that we at, um, see the World Bank and take the facility they are offering so that we can save the coastline. We're saving property, infrastructure, and the livelihoods of people. And please, whilst we are asking for this, Bella, can, can, can colleagues stop saying that our people are refusing to move? Can, can you stop doing that? You, you see, we are all Ghanaians, and um, we have a common heritage and a common culture, and it, pro it promotes um, coexistence. But what you're doing, you push me to say that it's deliberate because you want to punish us both mentally, emotionally, and economically. And then when you have done that and I react, you turn around and want to blame me. There's absolutely no reason no reason why they would, they would say they won't move. But have, has anybody shown you where they want them to move to? She put on a new oil on a hair queer no cottage, she know about the way at oil song jacket she bono. Is it possible? I love what we're going to choke her. I need better you call it woman and a female with ya. Is it possible to just get up and go and occupy a certain space? Where, ha, ha, as a journalist, is there any evidence that you have seen? I haven't or, seen any, but... But that's the point. So stop hiding behind, they don't want to move. They don't want to move. So, uh, 
Uh, like how? So if they should move, then government should create some but of course, havens for them before. But of course. Mm. They, they, people have suffered from disasters. And why have we set up NADMO? Is that not to manage disaster? Before, during, and after they've happened? So if you are preparing to have the people have a safe place to stay, you should identify the place, put in the necessary temporary infrastructure, and then if you say move it, they don't. that we are not in a good place as, 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 the, as the global uh, world, we are not in a good place with climate change, a global warming, yeah. right? Yes. So we are waiting for what, again, before we find the funding to, to do what we have to do? Why, why, why should we wait all the time till, um, look, what we can prevent, we, 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 we sit and watch for it to happen, and then we say there's no funding, Find it. How do they find it? The same way you found money to go and dig that hole that you are going to build the, the, the cathedral in, find it. Find it. Should, should government tax more then? But why should it be a, a, a tax, a burden on the people? Can, can we start by cutting unnecessary expenditure? Mm. Can we start by pruning how we spend the resources, the meager resources of this country, when you say unnecessary expenditure, give us examples of some of these expenditures that you describe as unnecessary. Um, there are many, but let me say, for starters, why, and the figures slipped my mind, mm. why we should continually mm, talk about a paperless com uh, environment okay. yeah. and still, still spend money Hiring venues, paying high bills for those venues for meetings. Things that we can decide even via Zoom. Mm. It's cutting down cost. It's cutting down cost. We don't have to always see each other face to face to be able to have all these many meetings from uh, MMDAs, all of it. Ministries, all of them. Mm. Can we start bridging the gap, uh, bringing, look, Ministry of Roads, Railway, uh, uh, Roads, Railway, Transport. Yeah, so, yeah. Why do we need three, Abba, why do we need three, three ministries for the same thing? Why do we need three ministries? But what sense does it make? But we've heard MPs speak about this. We've heard economists, we've heard stakeholders speak about this. Yes. Nothing has been done. The president says that his people have been outstanding. You see, um, you asked me earlier, and I told you political will, didn't mm. I? Yes. Political will. Mm -hmm. There's so much a member of parliament can do. I can sit in this chamber and, and shout on top of my voice and protest about the same thing. If the, the, the president and the executive pretend they can't hear me, there's, there's very little more I can do. Mm. There's very little more you can do. I mean, it's... Um, um, it's unfortunate that uh, we say one thing with one side of our mouth and we do the other thing. Our actions are not matching our words and our words are not matching our actions. As Shakespeare has advised we thespians that to make your act believable yeah. and make it real, 
what, what you say should be what you do. We, we, are, we have the finest laws, and people have told me this in, in, in many international conferences that I've been to, that Ghana has, the, a lot of their laws are modeled after Ghana, especially in the African countries. Yeah. So why do we have all these fine uh, uh, laws and all the people who can speak fine English? Their English is not like mine. Mine is from Bama County, St. Louis to, to Legon. People have fi finer English. They've gone to the places where the language is coming from. And all they do is regurgitate and, and repackage what they're saying with, with no action. But what, what should I do as a member of parliament? What else would you suggest that I do? Well, I can't suggest for you. I mean, of course, you are the MP, so you should tell us. But Oh, but that's, that's, a, that's a, a making it sound as if just because overnight you become a member of parliament, that you become the repository of all knowledge. Mm. No. I, I take, look, I, I go to my constituency and I go on radio. I love going on radio in my constituency. Mm. As soon as I, I, we rise from here, I go there, I go and announce that I'm back. Okay. When I'm leaving, I tell them I'm leaving. Oh, except for this time, I haven't told you I'm leaving. Well, I mean, I cry. <laughs> They're watching you now, so I guess yes, they understand. Yes, yes. So um, the, the, the people phone in, they call in, they give their suggestions. My number is on every page in the constituency. They send me messages. So you, you take this feedback and it helps you position yourself on what to say and what to pursue for them in the chamber. And it's for that reason that I don't think we should be making members of parliament come across as if they know everything and can do everything. No, we don't have that kind of magic wand. So um, I think that um, civil society organizations, uh, religious organizations who have gone quiet, some are speaking, but most of them have gone quiet. You owe it to, to us, the people of Ghana, to ensure that I do my work right. Has the 2023 budget deepened our woes? We haven't had it yet, have we? 2022, sorry. 2022? Yes. Oh, but of course, all the taxes uh, that were increased, mm. uh, those that we were hoping to be removed that were not removed. Um, Which ones did, were you hoping to have removed from the 2022 budget? You know, you know of course, that the first one would be the obnoxious sanitary mm. tax, um, the e-levy, the, the, e the But COVID. it was reviewed downwards. E-levy was reviewed from 1.5% to 1%. And the threshold, unfortunately, was taken yeah, off Yesterday, the I'm sure it was your station that I was watching, that uh, someone was advising the Minister for Roads, mm -hmm. for example, that um, if, if the e-levy is not yielding as much, yeah. put back the tobe, the yes. tobe wasn't on yes. your station. Yes. See, mm -hmm. I, love, I love TV3. We are grateful so, for that. So, yes. <laughs> so I watched it and I said, see, ordinary people, he's not a member of parliament. Yeah. He's not a minister of state. He's not in the executive. But he has thought through it and knows that if you have done that, the number of, the, the amount of money or resource you could get from uh, the tobos will be more than what you, what you have done. So mm. you shot yourselves in the foot. Shot yourselves in the foot. But we're told that the tollbooth collection will become. Will we're waiting. Back. We're waiting. And I'm hoping that when it comes, it will be an improved version that doesn't uh, uh, cost as much discomfort to, uh, to road users, mm -hmm. commuters, as the manual one does. But I hope you that... haven't seen any work being done at our various toll booths at the moment. And so if you say it should be less cumbersome, they've talked about technology and how we should even improve the collection of road tolls with yeah. technology. How soon do you expect this to happen? Yesterday. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's a, and, and I'm, I'm only uh, one of the many people who have spoken about the deplorable state of the, the, especially the motorway. It's such an embarrassment, a health hazard, a death, a death trap. Many people have spoken about this. If we get it right, and, uh, you know, look, sometimes I think that we are very hypocritical in this country. Why do you say that? Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, Alban Kingsford Suman Agbagbe, mm. mentioned that uh, the, the Minister for Roads didn't have the power to take that decision yeah. and urged him, and the records are there. He, Mr. Speaker was ignored. Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, was ignored. To date, did the President hear? Did he not hear? His colleagues were here. 
His side of the divide were here. Your side has been there as my well. Heart, my side, so I was coming you, to it. You jumped ahead of me. Apologies for that, but how have no, you ensured okay. that you get him to respond to some of these? What, what, I, look, if Mr. Speaker, number two or number three of this country, has spoken, you want a black? Who is sitting, who is a backbencher? You have equal numbers <laughs> in Parliament. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Equal numbers, mm. 138, 137, 137, 137. Um, second Deputy Speaker says he, he's working with uh, the, the, uh, the NPP side mm. of the House. Uh-uh. 138, one, 137. And if Mr. Speaker said, says that you shouldn't take that decision mm -hmm. and you don't, re you don't respond positively to it, should we walk out because of that? Would you suggest? What would have been the best way to ensure that they reverse that decision that was made? The best way is that once he suggested and you know that is wrong, just do the right thing. Well, he didn't do it. But you see, you can't hold a cane behind the minister all the time. Hmm. You know, every time I go on social media and I see Ghanaians are not angry enough, then I say, but of course, you're not angry enough. You agree to that? Why do you say so? When you've, when you've taken a decision which is ad hoc and you cannot defend it, and the citizens who have empowered you to be an MP, to be a minister, to be a... You ignore their call. And if the time is not right for them to do it, there are other ways in which... We, we have learned from fun. the certain president how demonstrations are done, mm. right? Mm. He led one of the most successful demonstrations ever in this country for a cause. So if we are angry enough, we should lead the demonstration and say, why are you not listening to us? We should go on the streets to protest oh, about the, of course. Isn't that what the cancellation of the road. Oh, tour. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bring back the money. The, the workers, the, the workers who were at the toll booths, oh, yeah. the disabled people, yeah. persons living with disabilities, yeah. they hit the streets. They, 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 they decried, they hit the streets about yeah. this because they had not received their money yes. that were promised them. Yes. In fact, they were told that they will still receive some um, extra but, money for yes. the number of months they'll be at home until they are, yes. you know, given jobs. That didn't heed any results. Well, well need a, you any see, results. but you see, even the fact that we use that for mm -hmm. political mileage, that we were going to uh, employ the disabled, mm -hmm. and I, I, I volunteer on the disability co uh, committee yeah. in parliament. Um, we used them to gain political mileage. Mm -hmm. And then we took this decision once again. You see, I said it was ad hoc, because if it wasn't ad hoc, you would have planned how to transition them from that place to something else, alternative source of livelihood mm -hmm. never seems to be on the table for discussion and when they went on demonstration the rest of us they what didn't oh, say a word yeah. anyway you and, I, you and i didn't join that well i'm speaking we spoke about it on air by the way yeah. i mean we covered it yeah. as well I, oh, I we've there constantly and, and been and talking I'm, about yeah. this issue unfortunately yeah. Yeah. it's falling on deaf ears but also joining us this morning here um, at the foyer of Parliament is Dr. Dixon Adumakukisi. He's the MP for Anya Sotom, and he will also be having this conversation with us. We still have with us Honorable Ablanji Fagomashi. She's the MP for Ketu South, and of course, she's touched on a few things that she thinks should be included in the 2024 uh, budget, and of course, um, what should not appear in there. I don't know what you think, but we're streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana, and so share the word and let people know, spread the word and let people know so they can watch us as well. The hashtag is TV3 New Day. Now, if you look at, of course, what the budget would be like as the finance minister joins us or comes to parliament, in fact, we're told that the ministry announced that the budget will highlight, among others, the performance of the economy, efforts to boost the production cap uh, capacity of the economy through the new growth strategy, fiscal measures, and debt management strategies to deepen stability and promote growth. Dr. Dixon Adumakukisi, good morning to you. Thank you morning. for joining us. How are you doing? Uh, it's a beautiful day. So far, I think the weather is uh, quite uh, encouraging. Mm. Um, we're hoping to have a bright day and a powerful delivery from the finance minister. 
Uh, You're expecting and, a powerful delivery from him? Well, I mean, this is the first post-IMF arrangement uh, budget. And uh, we want to see how well we are putting our things in line with the demands from the IMF. Mm. And, and I think this uh, gives him the opportunity to let Ghanaians know and to let the IMF know that we're actually uh, trying to coast clear of danger. And uh, I, I think that uh, whether we like it or not, uh, times are hard, which the president admitted to, and as it is, encouraged the finance minister to make an arrangement with the IMF, which yeah. that's where we are now. And, and I think that uh, at the core of it, we are expecting that one, government uh, programs and government expenses will be tapered down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also expecting that revenues uh, should be where we were hoping. Uh, so far, whether we like it or not, the e-levy, though it didn't meet our expectations, has still raked in something, mm -hmm. which is very commendable. Uh, and it should stay? Well, as it stands now, I mean, uh, per my experience with taxes, once you introduce any new tax, uh, it's, it's, it's in your interest to maintain it and not change it. Mm. Uh, because the, the processes involved in introducing new taxes mm -hmm. um, makes it such that uh, scrapping them and reintroducing something else is quite difficult. But there are calls for the reintroduction of the road tolls. And so if that's the case, then drivers are saying e-levy must go. Well, um, let me be very categorically clear about this. To begin with, mm. as a nation, and I'm speaking from the heart, our citizens have many demands on us as government. Mm. And, you know, once you have demands, there's something missing in our culture. The Americans pay, say you, 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 you need to contribute towards what you want. Mm. And if we want good roads, uh, plush schools, mm -hmm. uh, good hospitals, we as a society, need to be ready to put in. Mm. And, and that culture needs to improve with, with, with our next generation. And, and I'll plead with everybody that, listen, uh, whether we like it or not, we have come to acquire a certain taste of healthcare. We've come to acquire a certain taste of education. And I believe that we need to maintain and improve that. Okay. And to maintain and improve that, there's no way you can have the good things without paying for it one way or the other. But nobody has said they won't pay for it. The drivers are willing to pay the tolls. Yes. And so if, and, and yesterday one of them gave a scenario. Uh -huh. Road tolls, whether you like it or not, you pay. Even if you are in public transport, the drivers are going to have to increase the cost of transportation because from that they will take money and pay the road toll. So everybody gets to pay. But e-levy, not everybody gets to pay. And you remember when it was introduced, the first time that, of course, we were given details as to how much we had accrued, it was just about, what, 60 million? It was really short of what we were expecting to raise. That clearly shows that Ghanaians were not in favor of the e-levy. If you go back to when we removed tolls, I'm one of the, uh, let me say, majority members. Mm -hmm. That was not for it. I was very clear, I even wrote about it, that road tolls are very important to our development. And looking at my experience in New Jersey, uh, where almost every mile you have a toll to pay. Yeah. I've, I've always been very keen on modernizing our road tolls so that people don't have to queue mm -hmm. and that we'll use this, uh, what we call a Z payment, where electronically it just registers from your car and then you go through. And, and I am more for modernizing road tolls. Okay. Uh, you know, so, and, and, and more importantly, we need to make sure that whatever is taken goes into the state funds. I have to be very honest about it. For the, for the life of me, I know that Temamoto Way's road tolls, I can almost confidently say that half of that never made it into state coffers. Mm. Either some goes to, quote unquote, uh, self-made chiefs in certain areas. Mm. And what I mean by that is people who may claim to be even chiefs and not chiefs, they take, they take their, their, their quota. And, and that, uh, as it is, 
boys and men who, who, who deny government of the full funds. Mm -hmm. and, and this has been made evident by bad receipts that are given or that were given at road tolls. Okay. Uh, and, and, and I must say that if and if we intend to go back to tolling, my biggest concern is how we're going to make sure that all the tolls go straight into government checks. Digitalization. Well, uh, let me be frank with you. I am 100% for digitalization and using of technology. But even at the ports, it was difficult. Even with technology, there are still leakages. So in as much as possible, what I'm for is, yes, uh, do the technological advancement, but be very careful so that everything, even through technology. For instance, if mm -hmm. you're going to introduce technology, make sure that you're not cheated by the tech company. Because what I mean is that if they, they overbill us for the job they're about to do, that would also go against us. Okay. So in total, um, all of us, including the minority, are screaming for roads. And that is a fact, undisputed. There's not a single minority member in parliament who would say that, oh, as for me, uh, I'm okay with my road. Mm. All of us are for it. And not I a think, single Ghanaian either. And I think we've made it abundantly clear to the minister. And I'm hoping that this budget will speak to it, not just speak to it. The amount allocated to roads next year has to be abundantly clear to all of us that, yes, finance minister knows that roads matter, especially okay. an election year. And I believe that if our expenses next year is lump-sided more towards roads, Ghanaians will give us, uh, you know, a, a second, uh, you know, hear, mm -hmm. hearing, mm -hmm. and, and give us judgment in the favor of retaining power 2024. I, I, I'll come to you. You are hoping to retain power. So, that's, so that means that you're going to allocate more resources to construct the roads, and you're hoping that that will help you retain power. Like I said, where that, are you getting the money make, from? Or where do you expect Ghanians to get the money from? Give us a second hearing. Okay. You understand? And okay. what I mean by that is the first hearing may not have gone well, but the second hearing of a case, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when the roads are done, will be fantastic. I am relating it to my constituency, a very stronghold of the MPP. In as much as it's a stronghold, everywhere I go, the market women, roads, mm. the churches, roads, everywhere I go within my constituency. So without a doubt in my mind, though they always vote for us, they will actually pour in a lot of votes once they see these roads. And you know, property rates are struggling mm -hmm. because it is very difficult for me to push them hard to pay their property rates. I'll let you hold on on this. I know so Anabu Abladji Fagoma, she has oh, to go. spoken No, 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 I'm not, I'm not letting years. her speak. <laughs> almost 30 years. Because I, I have to go. She has to oh, leave. you have to go. So I was ah, just... <laughs> ah. I, I wanted her to, I want, I want to, her to hear me. You wanted her to hear you on this. But what have you said that's new today, though? I wanted her to hear me. What have you said today that's new? Well, do you have time? Well, you have to go, right? I want her to hear me. signal that you have a meeting. Can I just assure him that you cannot make us suffer for seven years mm -hmm. and come and tell us about uh, what it to do roads election year oh. so that you get a vote. I mean, come on. We'll get a second as, hearing. As free as, we'll as, as, free as HHS suffrage. Can I remind as, you? As extension of health insurance to many more deprived areas suffrage. As paying for many of our health infrastructure suffrage. I can cite the likes of Which? maternity at uh, K University. Uh -huh. I can cite the likes of GU <laughs> at uh, Kolebu. But there's La General Hospital. Oh, my dear, let that me is be. Still let me be on the ground. Let me be over 100 percent. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you want to leave or you want to leave? Would you give us a few more minutes? Let me, let me be, <laughs> let me be over 100. Maternity block. Let me be over 100 uh, percent clear with you that mm -hmm. La General will find uh, its place in the budget. Today. Well, that we had the minister announce it yesterday, where he so, said that so, we so had been able now, to secure local funding. Let me help my years. lovely senior member of parliament. In all fairness, one maternity block mm. might be even as big as a hospital. But and, 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 and what I mean by it that might. is it that 
the, is not the, the loan we approved for K University's uh, maternity block mm -hmm. is quite heavy, and she was part of it. And and it can it can be an entire, uh, you know, two of or three of the district hospitals uh, together. So so if if not for anything, uh, the agenda one one one, most of them are priced around ten million. Okay. Yeah. La General alone is 50 plus million. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, La General alone is about five agenda one one one. Yeah. You understand? So I'm only making reference to the point that uh, if you're comparing facilities by way of just the departments, some maternity building in New York is, is an entire hospital in Ghana. Please, I understand me. So, I so, see. so I'll beg here. And, and likewise, this is one of the mistakes that some have made. The Nanado Dankwa STEM schools are about five E blocks. So, one STEM school is about five E blocks. And that is a fact. And she knows. If you go visit the, the nine locations, you come to a realization that one STEM school is a handful more than one E blocks. And even to complement our government, We've made, uh, we've built over 30 e blocks in, in, in support of continuity of governance. You have built over 30. And what and about the ones abandoned? No, no, no. Listen, uh, if, if you had foundation and you claim it's abandoned, and we've been able to put up 30. 30 yeah. new ones? 30. So why didn't you continue and the ones that were no, started? No, no. Let me tell you, they started over 90, some at ground level, and it is out of those 90 that we have done 30. So it isn't that we went to site new places. So okay. Existing e-blocks, we've done over 30. Mumbai and Sim, you know, we've done, we've done quite a bit. Ah. And that is in support of continuing of governance. You understand? Okay. Uh, let, let, let me just my, 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 my You need to again. go. I need to so go. Give us your final words. Yes, before, before you I go. go. Yeah. I, I, I would wish that um, when you continue to tout the free SHS as the, the most important thing that you have done. One of. Those are our, our flagships. One of half yes. of whatever the situation may be. Yeah. Be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. That system you are running versus the one you and I benefited from in this country. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the person who we are waiting for today, mm -hmm. the finance minister, himself said, why should he allow for the state to pay for his children? Mm. And you are so... Look, can you not just admit that it was well-intentioned, it was piloted, you should. Uh, you wanted to do this. We have been unable to do it. And you know, the, the part. You know the part that annoys me. Uh -huh. The one that anytime JM says that. Sorry, President John Dramani Mahama says that. Former president. Like uh, uh, President Mahama says that uh, you've been talking about America, America, America. Mm. When you're in America, don't they just say President Obama? No, eh? no, former president. Oh, uh, Former president so, Obama. So anytime he says that, I review. Then they run and reach that here, but you stop shaming me. You are from my constituency. Stop shaming what, that constituency. What, what is he, he, here? he will say that. Is he, here? he will say the stuff Please, like. Is Richie? It's because. Is he here? Is you, he can you stop interrupting me? <laughs> because here. I was here okay, carry when on. you were speaking. Carry on. So he will say stuff like, it's because we want to scrap it. There's a problem with the, e, the, the free SHS. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well intentioned. Execution has been abysmal. Embarrassing. That's your opinion. And it's yours too, only that you can't say it. If you say it, your people will think that you are defective to my side, which is the reason why you have to stick by what you, are, you have been singing. MPP. But for we, life. And we, we all know, <laughs> it's deliberate, isn't it? <laughs> we all know that this, this policy is suffering because it was not well thought through. Sometimes you want to do a, a, a granite soup. And then you, you remember that, oh, you have some old palm nuts there. You want to add it and make it a new thing. If it's going wrong, chase it and start something afresh. Or so they should improve work. on what you have. Council really? review. Oh, of course, review. Okay. Of course, review. Well, you said chase so that means no, that no, but you, you, you take you it off and start me. something new. Okay. Or 
improve. Okay. That's one I, I, I just said the word improve, and then you interrupted. But that's okay, Bella. All I'm saying is that it, for the acting time, for the acting time, I've been saying it on other, this is the first time you and I are sitting on the set. Tell your government. Our government. The, well, yeah. Tell, tell our government that the free SHS was well intentioned, but we need to look at, take a second look at it. As we speak, Bella, if, if I go to the constituency, in the past, before I became MP, you know I'm Mama Jamado of Aplau? Yes. I would write to the education office. Mm -hmm. They would tell me when I can have access to the children. I used to mentor them before they go to SHS. And then I'll organize something, skills and so on for the, the, the young people. Now I've lost, I cannot keep track of when I can get them and when I cannot get them. Why? Because of the red, gold, green. Because oh, well, of, oh, stopped. Jujola. OK, OK. Please allow her to land you. Then, why? To her. Uh, carry on, carry on. That has stopped. That's why. Um, what has stopped? Red, gold, green. The, oh, what, what, is, what is in place of red, gold, green is even worse. Hey. So now they sit at home for so many months. They go to school for like maybe two months and they're home for. for is, is that better? Is that what you and I benefited from? Is, oh. that, is that what you. You, 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 said, you said I shouldn't talk. So I'm quite. It's not a question, it's rhetorical. Ah, okay. Okay. Anyway, Bella, thank you so much for this thank morning. Thank you too. Um, <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning. Doctor, my foot has been hurting. Uh, okay. I, I, but we'll, we'll I'll, I'll discuss personal that. notes. We'll discuss yes. That. Well, yes. Thank you so much, Arbo Jifa. But can he stop doing Go that free SHS thing, trumpeting it? Well, we'll it, talk it, more about that. Excellent. Because he can continue to stay with us. I'm trying to calm myself down people. by bringing my foot he, he, He's still with us just as we have this conversation. Yeah. Um, but Arbo Abla Jifa Gomashi will have to take leave of us. She right. has a caucus meeting. She has one of the beautiful names within the NDC. I always like to hear it. I see. Honorable yeah. Abla Jifa Gomashi. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Abla Jifa Gomashi is fine. Okay. Abla. But you always call me Auntie Jifa, which is good. I, I do, yes, yes I do. Yes. Thank you so and much. Because thank of you. her, someday we'll work heavily on the sea defense for her. I see. Her. Did he just say someday? Yeah. Well, Maybe well, it's not in the budget. Let, let's let's quickly there. go back to the studio. Sorry. But Dr. Dixon Adumako Kisi still remains with us. Um, we'll have more conversations about the economy. Don't go anywhere. Over to you now. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Bella. Thank you so much, Bella. Um, we just heard from Bella and two of our members of parliament, Honorable Jifa Ablangumashi, and also the MP for Anya Sotum. Back in studios, we're going to be talking to a man who represents our traders. Now, um, as we ask for the review of some taxes, some people are asking for the absolute scrapping of some taxes. And we've talked about the fact that we probably need to increase our revenue. And so maybe new taxes will be introduced during the budget statement this morning. Others have said that perhaps it's time we stopped thinking about increasing revenue and rather reduce our expenditure. We're going to be talking to the president of the Traders Advocacy Group of Ghana, David Amwating, now in studio. Sir, you're welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. Good to be here. Now, the Traders Advocacy Group, you advocate for traders sure. in the country. A lot of calls have been made for review and scrapping of taxes. We know that import tax, import tax in the country now has gone up really far up. We've had calls for review, we've had calls for scrapping and reduction of some of these taxes. We are expecting the finance minister to address parliament today. And for you and the Traders Advocacy Group, what are some of the specific things you expect him to address? Let me say a very good morning to your cherished viewers and uh, more importantly, the Traders Advocacy Group fraternity. We are expecting the finance minister to cut down a lot of taxes. Cut down? Yes, in as much as we know that uh, they need revenue in developing the country, there are some taxes that need to go. Because when you take the duty paper, there are some taxes that we find too complicated. If you process my document for me, you charge me like network charge, service charge. I mean, when, when you go through it, sometimes when I go for interview, I like the presenter to read it through. Okay. Because sometimes they think that we are making things up. But if you do 
charge a, somebody who is coming to clear his or her car or a container. Network charge. That apart from that network charge, you have network charge VAT. The same network that they are using in calculating your duty that you are paying. You are paying VAT. Fine. Somebody will argue, even if you go and have a lunch, you do pay VAT. Accepted. Then, after that, NHIL, when they charge you, you pay another network charge on NHIL. So, okay, hold on. First, you pay the network service charge, mm -hmm. which is a standard. Yeah. Then you come and pay VAT on the network service charge. Mm -hmm. Then you pay NHIL. Mm -hmm. Then you pay network service charge on NHIL. Mm -hmm. Then you pay get fund. Then you pay get NHIL on get fund. NHIL on get fund? You see, sometimes I like if the camera can zoom in <laughs> or you can read it. Okay. Then everybody will get to know that, yes, indeed, you are speaking the truth. Okay. So you know it's my container. So, my so, name is there. so this is a, a, a document from this year. Yeah. Um, from September yeah. this year. All right. So on one shipment, you are paying import duty, mm -hmm. import VAT, mm -hmm. processing fee, mm -hmm. ECOWAS levy, mm -hmm. network charge, mm -hmm. network charge VAT, mm -hmm. network charge COVID-19 mm -hmm. health, Ghana Shippers Authority fee, import NHIL, network charge NHIL, IRS tax deposit, um, Ghana CD disinfection fee, Ministry of Health disinfection fee. <laughs> Special no, import levy, Ghana's export import bank levy, Ghana Education Trust as a get, um, get fund levy, mm -hmm. network charge on the get fund levy. So you, first you pay the get fund levy mm -hmm. and then you pay a network charge on the get fund levy that you are paying. Okay, inspection fee, mm -hmm. African Union import levy, mm -hmm. COVID-19 health recovery levy. But there was COVID-19 <laughs> up here. Let me see. Okay, so that's the only COVID-19 health yeah. recovery levy you're paying. So the taxes alone come up to, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, 50,000? Is that correct? <laughs> Even the 50,000 there, it's more than that. The okay. taxes alone so, so that you pay. For how long have you been paying all these taxes? Is this new? This one, we've been paying these taxes excluding about three. Okay. Yes, because the COVID-19 one wasn't there. Okay. You get it. Uh, what we are saying, we have it at the back of our mind. We know, because businessmen, we do travel a lot. Mm -hmm. We know that government needs money mm -hmm. in embarking on various projects and campaign promises that they always make. But one should ask him or herself, if indeed cargo are not coming to Ghana, then there should be a shortage of goods and products. But that is not the case. So sometimes I ask myself, do you have National Security Minister here? Why? Good. If indeed we have National Security, if indeed we have CID, if indeed we have people who are working, they will be pinching themselves and asking themselves, why are we losing traffic to Lume and Abidjan? But yes, so there are a lot of goods in the market. Now go to Jubilee, a place where they used to pack container to about 20. Go there, today as I speak, Brass people can play their match there. Football match. Exactly. So it's empty. Empty. The place is empty. Go to Lomé. You see, when you are talking about the taxes, uh, tax like Ghana Shippers Authority, I don't know why we still pay them. Because they are not doing the work assigned to them to do. They are not. Because when you go to Lomi, some of the charges that the vessels or the shipping lines cannot charge there, they are charging here. My sister, you go to Techima to bring a truckload of yarn. Yeah. Then the driver tells you transporting the Yam from Techiman to Accra, I'm charging you 50,000. If the truck arrive at, let's say, Abu Brushi, 
and you are offloading your yam. Can the driver charge you again? Mm -mm. But this is what the shipping lines are doing to Ghanaian importer. And those who repay, every entry that goes, if I say entry, if you are clearing car, clearing your container, that stuff is an entry. So every single entry, we allocate a certain amount of money for shippers authority. Okay. So that when things of that nature arises, they will jump to our defense. Okay. But here is the case, they are not doing anything for us, but everything, every day we are paying them. So a lot of taxes has to go. We, have, we know that government need revenue after embarking on IMF 10, okay. but a lot of taxes, we don't see the use of it. So you want these taxes to be scrapped? One time. At least three of them? Three of them. The three recent ones. Exactly. That's the COVID-19. Apart from the recent one, the, you see, there is the, they did one to our people, the, right. the sector like uh, food and beverages. Okay, I, I want you to just hold the thought. Let's, mm -hmm. let's cross over and talk um, to Professor Festus Ebo. He just joined us on Zoom. He's a development economist from the University of Ghana. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. Good morning to your viewers and your listeners. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, Prof, as we uh, wait to hear from the minister this morning, there have been concerns or calls to hear more about our IMF commitment and the effect it has on our economy now and the effect it will have on our economy going into 2024. What are your initial thoughts on that? Of course. I mean, the, the effect of the kind program that we have, the post-COVID program for economic growth has started having, having its impact. I mean, since February, the city has relatively remained stable as a result of the central bank's intervention through its gold for reserves and gold for oil and other factors that have come in to support um, the economy. The credibility itself also ensured that the capital flow investments that were taking place in our economy last year subsided and therefore there was less pressure on the city. And that has clearly manifested in inflation. As we speak, inflation has declined the third month running. So there's a deceleration in inflation as we speak. And the growth um, was projected to be about 1.5%. Ghana is going to go slightly above 3% at the end of this year. So um, the impact of the IMF um, supported program the PCPJ has started manifesting in the economy. And definitely it's because of the fact that I went to the fund. And uh, don't forget that part of the conditions were for us to do a successful debt restructuring, which has freed some space for our fiscal authorities to use that to expand our economy. So yes, things are working well. If we continue like this and we don't, normally break the, what we call the political business cycle in an election year, I think that Ghana should be able to recover much faster. Hopefully by 2025, December 2025, our economy should be where it was before it got into trouble last year. When you say if we continue like this, do you mean if we continue to borrow? No, I don't mean if you continue to borrow. What is happening is that part of the IMF program is for... Um, uh, uh, fiscal authorities to reduce or rationalize spending, prioritize our spending. In addition, it is supposed to come up with innovative ways of storing up our revenue, not necessarily increasing the number of taxes that we have, but using the digital platform and other um, policies to ensure that the revenue leakages and the tax exemptions that we give, we minimize them so that we can increase our revenue. Our domestic our revenue of 15 to 16% of GDP is too low. We need to get it to about 20% of GDP. And that is the normal level at which a middle income country should have its, uh, its revenue to GDP. And when we are able to do that and we rationalize our expenditure, we do not run a huge fiscal deficit that would lead us to go and borrow. And that is why one of the critical um, policy that we have to pursue for this was to do a debt restructuring so that we ease off some of the fiscal space that we 
we have so that we can use that easing of the fiscal, fiscal space to expand the economy so that in 2024, 2025, going on to 2028, Ghana can begin to expand so that our debt to GDP ratio would decline and our economy will get back to where we were somewhere in 2018, 2019. Uh, as we speak, we are going to enter into an election year. And like I just said to you, election years are years in which our fiscal authorities will overspend to win an election. And it's important that the IMF would ensure that the commitments that we have made to them, for them to come and support us, we keep to those commitments. I mean, there's going to be zero financing from the central bank. I'm not sure the central bank would, 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 would even try to do that. And knowing certainly where we've come from, I know the authority and the central bank would not do it. We also know for certain that government will have to invest in infrastructure, which is also key to expanding the domestic economy. Government has to focus on agriculture. So these are the sort of commitments that we went to the IMF for the, to seek their support. And so it is important that they keep us to those commitments. And that's the point I was making that once we keep to those commitments and we do the things right, our economy should recover faster into 2025 and the years beyond. All right. Now, what about the commitments that we have made to the IMF also is to stabilize the economy, return the economy into a much stable state. While we talk about the importance of revenue generation, what are your thoughts on cutting down expenditure? I mean, this, this, this is a point that has been made, I mean, <laughs> so many years. We even believe it now. It's, we've, we've, we've said that, I mean, government has to downsize. I mean, when you say government should downsize, we can look at it from two areas. One, uh, can we downsize the executive? That is within the president's prerogative to decide that, let me align some of the ministries and reduce the number of ministers. I mean, for what is worth, it gives a signal that there's a commitment right at the top to reduce government spending. Some have said it won't save us any, anything, but it's, it's a signal that means a lot to almost everybody in the public service that the government is doing something about reducing its expenditure. Apart from that, one key area that we need to take a look at, which is part of the issues that we have, is on our national procurement laws. We need to take a second look at it. Do we get value for money from the public service? Is it important that we ensure that not only do we go through the processes, but does Ghana get value for money? If Ghana is not getting value for money, then that is the reason why our expenditure is high, but our economy is not expanding. Because a good that will cost one dollar or one city is being given to government at five or ten cities. So it means that it is important that if we want to rationalize our expenditure, we take a look at how much government procures for goods and services within the economy. Secondly, we can also take a look at some of the state-owned enterprises or the public sector enterprises to find out if it is possible to win some of them of the government payroll. Because compensation to employees of the public sector is also quite huge. Mm. Now, what can we do about the public universities? I mean, as we speak, on average, a student at a university is paying 1,700 cities for the whole academic year as fees. I mean, this is unrealistic. I mean, and if we go on like that, whilst the cost of living is increasing, it means that the government will have to subvent the universities with more money. Is that what we want to do? We want government to go and borrow to come and survey the investors so that we pile up our debt and we get into this crisis and we have to do a debt restructuring and struggle. Why won't we go beyond the political economy issue to say that, look, we are going to increase university fees, not to the levels that we expect, but at least so that some of the costs that are borne by the investor can be absorbed by the fees that they've collected. Can we do that? Can we win certain agencies of the government payroll? Because one, if you're able to reduce the compensation to employees, if we check and make sure that we streamline the national procurement to give government value for money, then the use of goods and services will also decline. 
And these are the sort of things that we need to do to rationalize our expenditure. For instance, cleaning of ghost names. We hear of the IMF every time they've come to support us, insisting that the ghost names are clean. The ghost names are clean, but once they leave, the ghost names come back. All right. We need to read the public sector wage bill right. of ghost names. So these are the sort of commitments that we've given right. to the, the fund. And All once right. we are able to commit to mm. them, I think that we should be able to All right. uh, rationalize the expenditure, yes. All right. We shall come back to you with more questions and discussions after the budget has been read. So please be on standby for us and available to us when we call. Thank you so much, Professors, for talking to us there. Now, uh, back in studio, we still have um, Mr. David. Now, we have to wrap up. Sure. So what will be your final comments on your expectations? Okay. So in as much as we expect government to cut down on a certain taxes, we also suggest, because we can always be complaining, complaining, mm -hmm. we suggest that government look at introducing something that tag we called coupon for artisans. Because if a POP guy can take 16000 and finish the job within three weeks, and not paying anything as taxes. And somebody that gets about 1,008 after receiving the money, even the money will be, even they'll take their taxes before the money mm. hits your accounts. So government can look at a lot of ways in expanding the tax net rather than always putting taxes on the, on the same, yeah, on the same those people. people that have been Thank you so taxes. much, sir. It's been great talking to you. I've just been talking to Mr. David Amwati. He's the president of the Traders Advocacy Group, Ghana. We're going to cross over now to the floor of parliament where Bella is talking to some of our um, well, guests House. We're having conversations ahead of the finance minister making an appearance on the floor of parliament to give us the 2024 budget reading. I'm still here with Dr. Dixon Adoma Kukisi. He's the MP for Anya Sotom. And also joining us is Dr. Sebastian Sandari, the MP for Dafiama Busi Isa constituency. Thank you for staying and thank you for joining thank us. You I hope you're well. I mean, he's given a fair idea of what he's expecting in the budget today. What about you? What are your expectations? Yeah, I also expect um, measures or interventions that really would reduce the burden of Ghanaians. We all know that um, currently we are facing a lot of hardships to the extent that even kinky and fish is difficult to afford for many um, families. So I want to see policy measures, interventions that reduce the hardships of, of Ghanaians, that will reduce expenditure uh, by government and measures that will really you know, improve revenue so that in totality, life is better for the ordinary Ghanaian. And, and also on the health sector, I expect to see that at least we complete many of the uh, abandoned infrastructure, including Agenda 111 that has been the government's uh, flagship uh, 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 measure. Mm -hmm. But you go around the country and many of them are still at a foundation level, you know, are not rich. So I, I, I expect more work in this in this area. I like, I like that you talked about Agenda 111. And yesterday, lawyer Alex Sebefia was in the studio with me, and he said that for him, he even thought that the 111 hospitals were too big. In fact, government should have considered even focusing on just 20 hospitals, and that would have made better sense than to give such a large number and still not be able to complete it. Even the president says that they will be ready before the end of his tenure or by the end of his tenure. Rightly so. Any serious government or any serious policy person would have gone that way. Where if you want to build even the 111 hospitals, you don't address all at a go, especially when you don't have that financial muscle. Mm. You could have divided them into phases, maybe finish the first 20, then you roll up to the 20 until you are done. But you would have been able, maybe at this time that we are talking, the government would have been able to show us, say, 20 hospitals that have been finished mm. and working. But the way it is, they can't even show us just one of the Agenda 111 hospitals that uh, they have completed. Uh, work is ongoing, mm -hmm. but every day it is, it is still Agenda 111. And um, what I heard uh, some of the, the, the government 
uh, people say is that they're even taking measures to add the La General Hospital yeah. to the Agenda 111, mm -hmm. meaning that they're even driving towards Agenda 112. Mm. If they add La to the same kind of uh, 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 steps they are taking to build Agenda 111. Then it's for, it's Agenda 112. But for La, yesterday you know, the health minister says that funding has been secured locally, some 15, 50 million euros. Um, to start construction? Uh, unless a foreign 